I know I've talked a lot about triggers, um, but I do that because I believe that they really are a significant factor for many of us as we're working to heal from betrayal. And one of the biggest problems is when you have that, that stomach drop, that heart rate increase, you don't know, are you responding to some echo from the past or are you actually reacting to a red flag in your present? And trying to decipher the difference can be quite tricky. So I know for me, and probably for many of you, one of the things that I now see that I did wrong in my first marriage is I didn't ask enough questions and I trusted too much. And so because of that, I've tried to learn from that. You know, I'm not going to sweep things under the rug in the same way that I did then. I'm not going to accept excuses or even provide excuses quite as easily as I did before. And in the context of my marriage now, there are things that will come up, words, situations, whatever, where I can feel my body responding. And at the beginning, I didn't do so well with that. At the beginning, I would sort of ride that that reaction, that emotional roller coaster, and go into panic mode quite easily. But now I'm much more intentional about my approach to that. And so I'm going to share with you sort of how that works for me now. So the first thing is that it is impossible to distinguish between a warning and a fear, or between something that is valid and something that is invalid when you are in a heightened emotional state. You simply cannot tell. Your body right now is screaming at you that you are in danger. And so it is going to interpret every single bit of data as a threat. So the first thing you need to do is basically press pause. This is a time that you need to step back. You need to step away. Give yourself some space. Give yourself some time. For me, one of the things that I like to do is go for a walk or a run. And I find that that helps me in a couple of ways. One is I move the body. It helps to kind of keep my, my thoughts going forward. I mean, it's really strange, but if you're moving forward, your brain tends to go forward as well. But it also gives me the space to think. So it's not doing something that's so distracting that I can't process whatever's going on, but it's something where I'm not just, you know, letting those thoughts take over. So I get some exercise in. Then what I like to do is take some time to really just focus on the breath because you're probably still somewhat in that fight or flight mode. And at that point, your breathing becomes very, very shallow. And there's a feedback loop there. If your breathing is shallow, it's telling your body you're in danger. If your body thinks you're in danger, you're going to be breathing more shallowly. But if you can start to take those very slow, deep, diaphragmatic breaths, you're telling your body that you're safe. And even if what you're sensing, even if whatever's going on is something that needs to be addressed right now, right now in this moment, you are safe. So let your body know that. I think it's important to survey yourself and not survey others. If we've been betrayed, a lot of times we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust our own judgment, our own intuition. And so sometimes it's easy to try to offload that on others and say, hey, can you do this heavy lifting for me? Can you go through this? Let me hear what you think. I want your perspective on it. There's a couple of problems with that. One, they're going to give you their outside perspective, but they're not you. They're not living the life you're living. They don't have the same boundaries you do, the same experiences you do. So it might be good information, but it also might not be worthwhile. The other piece of it is you need to learn how to trust yourself. And if you constantly are putting all of that off on other people, you're never going to get there. Instead, what I like to do is basically survey myself and one of the ways to do this is just by journaling. Just do some kind of free writing and it gets you out of your brain a little bit and just kind of get it out on paper. And once it's on paper, then you can read through it and you can see it from a little bit more rational perspective. And so sometimes that's a helpful way to, to separate out the, the feelings from what's really going on, to try to figure out, are you reacting to something from the past or is this really something that I need to deal with today? And then finally, I recommend sleeping. So I know that that can be difficult because 
if your brain right now is saying, you know, danger, danger, there's something that, that needs to be addressed. I, I, I need to talk about this. And if it's, you know, if in the past you were too avoidant, now you might want to err on the other side of like, no, we're talking about everything right away. But if you're going into that depleted, and if you've just been through that fight or flight response, you are depleted, your body is tired, your brain is tired. If you get some sleep, it really can help you approach this from a much calmer perspective. And then finally, after you've done those things, ask yourself a question. Is that issue, that argument, whatever it is, is that still going through your mind with the same intensity that it was before? If it is, that's something that you need to address. But because you've taken the, that time and done that work, you're going to be in a much better place now to have that conversation because you're not so panicked. And if you find that, you know what, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal anymore. Or you recognize, oh, I'm overreacting to this because of, and you connect it to something in your past, then maybe it's really nothing that you need to deal with at all. And it's just an echo. No matter what, triggers are hard. But I promise that in time, you can get better at moving through them. And you can get better at learning which ones to listen to and which ones you can safely ignore. All because you learn how to trust yourself. <laughs>